All right, Moses, join me at the desk. Now, before we get to our next story, I just want to say um, a few months ago, we went to an event where uh, the Balfords were welcoming back Andrew Albers. And I just want to say, great baseball player, but even nicer guy. He was such a nice, down, to, you know, humble, down to earth kind of guy. So, wishing him all the best, whether it's overseas or in the MLB or. Oh, he's going to do teacher. great, whatever he does. <laughs> exactly. He's been a class act. And you know why? Because he's from Saskatchewan. That's how we raise him. <laughs> I'm an Just Alberta girl and he's a Saskatchewan boy, so you can say either way. Exactly. It tells a <laughs> lot about this one anyways. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> All right, let's move on to a different kind of sport. We're going to move on to hockey now, of course. Just a Despite a setback at the John Reed Memorial Tournament, the Lloyd Minster Universal Heat still have so many reasons to smile because these wins just continue to pile up. You know what? So much so, Nairman, that the Heat have now clinched home ice advantage throughout the playoffs. Matt Schumann has more. Two weeks ago, it looked like the Heat were well on their way in making an appearance in the final at the John Reed Memorial. Going perfect in the round robin, they once again stumbled in the quarterfinals, but despite coming back to the border city empty-handed, the team did like the effort they put forward. I thought the boys' effort for the five games we played were, was really good, and you know you can take a lot of positives out of that uh, weekend and you know build off that. We played to our best, except for the last game, we kind of fell apart until the third period and make a good comeback. The Heat did not let that result phase them. In two games last week, the Heat outscored their opponents 13-2 and with the victory secured home ice advantage throughout the postseason. That was our goal. Uh, we set out at the beginning of the year to get home ice advantage. And, you know, uh, the boys came out and played a really good road game in uh, Spruce Grove, you know, they're a tough hockey team and I thought we did a great job on the road. We've been talking about how big home ice advantage will be and we want that throughout the year. It's good always to have your home fans, home ice. And with the regular season coming to a close in two weeks' time, the remaining three games will be big for the Heat as they know they got to be in fine form heading into the playoffs. We want to uh, finish strong, you know, you don't want to have any letdowns going into playoffs and, you know, we can use these three games to fine tune our game and get ready for a, a long stretch run. Matt Schumont, Newcap Sports. All right, moving on to the Lakeland Rustlers women's volleyball team. They're hard at work, hoping to snap their losing skid. That's seen them spiral down the ACAC standings, clinging onto a final spot for a provincial berth. But they hope a change of practice can get them out of a recent rut. For the second straight week, early morning practices and two-a-days have been the norm for the Lakeland Rustlers, doing whatever they can to come out of a funk that's seen them lose nine straight matches. The only thing we can do is put more time in and work harder, and so hopefully it's going to pay off here. That first day getting up, having those morning practices, that extra game film watching, you know, it was it was a bit of a struggle. I think we have a couple uh, non-morning people on our team, but, you know, now it's become a bit of our, our lifestyle. A change they hope can correct those mistakes that have crept into their game. But despite winning only five sets during that stretch, attitudes still remain high. We know that we are a good team. And so like that part is refreshing where you're like, you know, we're trying to figure it out, but I guess we're taking each loss as a lesson. I don't doubt that when it comes down to provincials, you know, when it counts, like we're going to be there. It's just, we just have been having a, yeah, just a tough go. But I mean, I don't doubt in our team at all. And I think we have the skill. We just need to execute it. And beat teams they should. The Rustlers committed 50 errors last week in two matches against Olds, prompting Austin Dyer to bring everything back to the basics. You can only do things one at a time. And so if we look at, what's happened in the last couple weeks and we look at how much we've lost and uh, we start dwelling on that then we're going to be looking at we have to win this next match well you can't win a match right off the bat you have to be able to play a best of five and you have to be able to be good the whole way through the wrestlers will aim for a pair of wins this friday and saturday at home against grand prairie the saskatel tankard is underway in shonovan a pair of locals are in the mix now we know about scott manners but how about mike armstrong both were teammates back in 2012 when Manners represented Saskatchewan at the Briar. Today, both rings kicked off their opening draws. The team known as Manners. T face Kevin Marsh from Saskatoon. Manners would steal a deuce in five and score two more in seven to win by a score of six to three. As for Armstrong, he's curling out of Saskatoon now with Tyler Lang as his third. Now remember, Tyler Lang was Manners third back in 2012. They fell to the defending champion, Brock Virtue, 7-1. Now, moving on to the other draws. Langenberg's Jeff Hartung steals 3-5 and five, and 5 more in 7, defeating Josh Height from Karabert, 10-2. And Bruce Corte advances 
through the first draw, doubling up on Max Kirkpatrick, 8 to 4. All right, tonight in Junior B, it's a battle of three versus four as the Lloydminster Bandits are hosting the Killam Wheat Kings. Puck drop is at 8 o'clock. 